Class is now in session. I'm Professor Hockey, and today we'll be discussing the game between the Sharks and the Canadians, in which the Sharks won 3-1. to one. This gave them their one and only win on this five-game road trip that is finishing up here in Montreal, as they now have a 1-3-1 record on it, claiming a three of a possible 10 points. And so it was nice to end the four-game losing streak for the San Jose Sharks and go back to San Jose on a winning note. It was certainly not a perfect game, game by any means. The San Jose Sharks came out very strong in the first period. That's where Justin Braun and Brent Burns, two defensemen, scored their goals to put the Sharks up by two. They had a very good first three quarters of that first period. Then the Canadians got a power play. They really pushed in that uh, last five minutes of the first period. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention, Shea Weber definitely teeing up some very good shots. I think this was his third game back from injury after he's been injured for a very long period of time. Ends up taking the knob off of uh, the stick of Martin Jones. He broke the stick of Tomas Hurdle in half on the same shift with two of his shots. He was really firing bombs, but the Sharks responded well. Second period comes along, definitely a bit more even. Uh, even. Canadians seem to be like a slightly better team in the second period, but still the teams exchanged goals. Joe Pavelski with his team leading 17th. Jeff Petrie got a bit of a lucky break, but he gets the goal to give the Canadians their one goal of this game. However, in the third period, it was really all Montreal Canadiens. They were throwing a ton of shots on net, some of them a bit low, uh, low chance, but some of them very high danger as well. Martin Jones had to be extremely strong in this game to hold the Canadians off as they managed to put up 40 shots. And so the San Jose Sharks hung on for the victory, but it was still a good two points to take in what is now a very tight Pacific Division with teams like the Golden Knights, teams like the Edmonton Oilers, teams like the Anaheim Ducks really picking up steam in these past few weeks. The first thing to talk about has to be, of course, Martin Jones. He, I said in the previous game that every facet of the Sharks game was failing. The offense, the defense, the goaltending, the, the, the coaching. Not everything rebounded in this game as the Sharks would have liked. The defense was still shoddy at best. It was better in you know the first 40 or so minutes, but it really started to give up a ton of chances in the third period. Martin Jones had to be absolutely spectacular. This is now my clear-cut best game of the season for him. He was very good against the Calgary Flames a few weeks back. A similar, actually, exact score that the Sharks won by 3-1. Martin Jones was even better tonight, making multiple huge saves. As I said, the shot, uh, one of the Shea Weber's shots in the first period on the power play makes the save with this, the knob of the stick, made a big breakaway save onto Paul Byron, a nice glove save onto Max Domi. Many, many great saves for Martin Jones. He really kept the Sharks in this one because the defense still seems to struggle at times. Maybe this game for Martin Jones will give him some confidence and will give the defense some confidence moving forward as they'll play again on Wednesday night at home. But it was a great game for Martin Jones. I said hopefully he'd bring it forward from the Flames game a few weeks ago. It didn't happen. I guess we could hope again today because it's certainly a confidence building type of game. Next, I'd like to talk about Shimek. Uh, I didn't think I would really talk about, you know, I didn't really talk about uh, Tim Heed when he replaced Yo Kim Ryan in those games because he really wasn't that great. I haven't really liked Tim Heed for the majority of his stay on the San Jose Sharks. I don't think he really proved anything in the, the two or three games or how many he got this season in place of Joachim Ryan. However, Shemek finally gets his first game after being a healthy scratch for the entirety of the season. It was said that he probably wouldn't be ahead in the death chart of Tim Heed, but I feel as though with this game, he has certainly passed him, and maybe he could even contest Joachim Ryan. This wasn't something I was worried about between Ryan and Heed, because they are very different players, and I really didn't like the way Heed played, but Shemek, you know, he was solid defensively. He laid a couple of massive hits on a couple of players, I think one on Gallagher, one on Agostino, and so he was really getting into the play. He was even getting time in the third period when we had previously seen DeBoer occasionally bench Joachim Ryan, especially here with a two-goal lead. Shemek was decently reliable. It wasn't a perfect game, certainly, but it was his first NHL game. We'll see if he can sustain that. But I would say, and I would even recommend at this point, that Shemek actually gets this next game here in Carolina before maybe teach Ryan a lesson because Ryan... The first time he was healthy scratched, I didn't think it was deserved, but he's been making a lot of unnecessary risks in these past few games, and so I was not happy, but I wasn't surprised to see him healthy scratch in this game, and I'd like that Shemek did not take any of those unnecessary risks in this one. Next is the lineup changes that the Sharks made coming into this game. I said something big needed to change, and this was probably as much as DeBoer could do. This was the lineup that I wanted to see coming into this game, really the exact lineup that I would have liked to see. 
Hurdle, Couture, Pavelski. Pavelski and Couture reunited. Last time they played was when Hurdle was injured and they had Meyer there. Now Meyer's injured, so they have Pavelski there. We'll see what the Sharks do if Meyer does come back for Wednesday night. But then they had Sorensen, Thornton, LeBanc, which was serving basically as the second line this game. And then they put back Kane, Sumel, and Donskoy that we have seen at different times this season. And I really think that worked out for both Sumela and Donskoy. Donskoy has been in the top six for the majority of this season, and he hasn't been very good in these past few games. He's been rather invisible at times, really not making that many great plays, but he did look a bit more energized with Sumela. Still not fantastic, but definitely getting there. Sumela, on the other hand, looked very good at times in this game. He was really getting up in the play. Hopefully Sumela can keep a third line center spot. It's going to be tough because once Meyer comes back, you would think he would demote Pavelski back to a cent- uh, like a second line center position, which could end up putting Sumela back to the fourth line. But I really do like Sumela on the third line. He's really getting a lot done for the team. Evander Kane also looked pretty much a bit more energized. And maybe that was actually for Donsko and Kane dedicated or sort of attributed to anti Sumela in this game. And so it was a nice job from the third line. Thornton and Sorensen still looked pretty good. I've liked Sorensen's game in the past couple of games, not even necessarily offensively, but defensively, as well as physicality-wise. Sorensen has been throwing his body a lot around, which is something I liked from Radic. Uh, Shemek early uh, early on in this game with those two big hits but I thought the lineup played pretty well together again the defensive plays from the forwards as well as the defensemen was shoddy this game but it was Martin Jones who really bailed the team out for the majority of it finally I'd like to talk about Joe Pavelski he's been a you know he's the captain obviously he's been a player who is sort of under the radar getting all these goals getting all these points putting himself up to 17 which is near the top of the NHL I think Line A leads with like 21 or 22, some crazy number like that. But Joe Pavelski has been very good. And really, even during these four, this four-game losing streak the Sharks have been on where it just hasn't been looking good at all. You know, Pavelski scored both of the goals to tie up the game in Buffalo. He had a goal against the Toronto Maple Leafs. He's probably been one of the few Sharks who's actually looked okay. Still not fantastic, as none of the Sharks have really looked fantastic. But Pavelski's looked pretty good. And, you know, he's getting older now. He's up at 34. It's his contract year. It's definitely a question mark what's going to happen in Joe Pavelski's future, but we can say that he's definitely giving his 100% in almost every single game he plays at this point with the Sharks. He's really putting his body on the line, blocking shots, making plays like this, and he's getting the timely goals that the Sharks need. That is definitely what you want your captain to be doing, and hopefully he's going to lead by example as he takes the Sharks maybe onto some sort of extended winning streak because right now, as I said, it's a bit of a treacherous spot that they sit in the Pacific Division. This win tonight was a good building block for that as they got the goaltending and I guess you could say the coaching part to uh, improve, but they need the offense to continue to improve as well as get the defense back at to you know a reasonable NHL level so that this team can actually rattle off a few wins in a row because we do know that on paper, this is maybe the best Pacific Division team. And at the moment, they said, I think it's third place in the division itself. But that will do it for this review. The Sharks will be back in action, as I said, Wednesday night against the Carolina Hurricanes. Their previous meeting against the Hurricanes, they started the game off rather well, had a 3-1 lead, but they threw the lead, ended up bringing a 3-3 tie into overtime, into shootout. They lost that one. The Sharks were going to be looking for a much better result that Wednesday night. They'll be back at home before they then go back on the road in the, the next game, I believe, against the Dallas Stars. But the Sharks will try and use that home game to get a second one in a row here and get on a bit of a roll. Class dismissed.